Hello everyone. A very, very warm welcome to all of you. I am Deya Prakash. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to Unraveling Security with IBM. We are kickstarting the Unraveling Security series to encourage thought-provoking discussions and share new insights on key cybersecurity topics relevant today. The focus of discussion today is XDR or Extended Detection and Response. I couldn't have asked for a better panel to have this session, I have with me today, uh, Mr. Milan Mungale, who's going to be joining us very shortly. Protein e-government technologies, formerly NSDL, e-governance infrastructure. Mr. Naga Mohan Golangi, CISO Bank of India. Mr. Vishant Pai, head GRC and CISO Yota Infrastructure Limited. Mr. Prashant Pujari, CISO Tata Technologies. Mr. Manthan Babu, Chief Technology Security Officer and Data Privacy Office, Officer, 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 Vodafone Limited, Vodafone Idea Limited, Ms. Shilpa Savant, AVP Cyber Security, Reliance Industries Limited, Mr. Rushikan Shastri, VP Banking, IT Domain Expert, State Bank of India, Mr. Somil Purani, Deputy Vice President, IT Access Bank, Mr. Manish Chandi Gera, IT Head and CISO, Insulator Business, Grassim Industries Limited, Aditya Birla Group, and Mr. Pradeep Vasudevan, CISA, Threat Management Leader, IBM Technology Sales, India, and South Asia. I welcome you all to today's discussion. So I, just, just, to, just to briefly introduce you uh, to Mr. Pradeep Vasudevan, right? Uh, he is the subject matter expert in today's discussion. Uh, so, Mr. Pradeep Vasudev is from IBM Security. Pradeep leads the threat management business for IBM Security for India and South Asia, South Asia region. He comes with 20 years of experience, most of them in the information technology and many in the cyber security domain. He is passionate about maintaining healthy customer relationship. I would like to invite Pradeep uh, for setting up a brief context to today's discussion uh, before I kickstart the discussion with all of you. Uh, so over to you, Mr. Pradeep. Thank you so much, Daya. Uh, thanks, uh, everyone. It, it's a pleasure meeting all of you together in you know, the digital platform before we all get back to our office, maybe in another couple of months and we will all be back in our office. In fact, today is the day when we are all back in office. Right. So our offices have opened and very happy to be in office after more than two years. Right. It's, a, it's a different experience altogether. Right. So uh, looking back, some of the problems that was inherited because of the work from home, remote work, some of the problems still continues. Right. One of them is the, the issues, the challenges that have been introduced by the hybrid workforce. And now we realize that is going to stay, right? I mean, that problem is not going to go away just because we are back in office, right? Uh, we have opened up our, our perimeters. Uh, we have introduced or opened up ourselves for a lot of external threats. So we were actually having an uh, internal review today, and we realized that whatever changes we have made in the last two years to make sure that people can access from outside do the business now, continue the business from outside. While we are back to office, the problem still remains same, right? The, the changes that we made are not going to, you know, reset back to two years back. So that was, you know, something that was lingering in mind when, when the discussion started. Our context of today's discussion is the growing threats and how XDR, extended detection and response, to what extent can it address the you know, increasing challenges, right? Uh, this is, I mean, we, we kept it, you know, such a way that you know, we, it is not something that you know, we are actually presenting IBM view on that. We wanted to hear about, you know, from your experience, what you see or what you think about XDR, you know, is it the right thing that 
uh, can solve the current problems right there is no prescriptive approach or you know uh, suggestions from ibm as an organization in this panel at least right we are keeping it open and very warm welcome to all the you know opinions feedbacks and we have some very specific questions you know, that we hear from our customers as well and uh, the questions are still open so we wanted to hear your view on that so that's the primary context second you know setting up you know, we, when we look back what are the changes that happened right what are the changes happened uh, that is actually making us to think about you no know, new solutions new approaches to the current you know uh, security threats one definitely with whatever you know structural changes that has happened in the last you no know, couple of years right now those problems are still there now how are we going to address like you now there is no perimeter right we, we i mean the perimeter has been disappeared we have been hearing it for the last two years on top of that there are a lot of more governance framework that have come in picture right come in space especially on the financial sector or uh, whatever the regulatory industries are and we are looking forward to the india privacy regulations very soon at the final draft stage and we are expecting an announcement on the framework to be to be you know uh, disclosed you know uh, very soon so that means we are going to have a very contained very restricted governance you know privacy regulation you know, regulatory framework for india as well while we already are you know supposed to be compliant you know some, so many other security frameworks so that is the second aspect when it comes to the compliance frameworks i'm, I'm not even referring to regulatory framework from rbi or you know other other bodies third the 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 risk associated or the, or the the complexity of the threats that you see in the last couple of years have increased manifold now the number of breaches that has been happening two years back or three years back when we look at it which were the largest industries getting attacked or targeted it was the financial services sector right if you look at the last one year news it is manufacturing retail um no pharma industry it is everywhere because breaching a financial organization you know getting some data out of financial organization is extremely difficult because of the layers and layers of security they have set up and the most vulnerable ones unfortunately are in the manufacturing right uh, retail etc so a lot of changes have been happening i mean that's continuous and we are thinking whether extended detection and response or xdr will it be the right uh, way to defend from some of these attacks yeah so with that i just wanted to set the context today uh, over to you daya and i think we'll have some questions uh, and sure. we are all welcome to see your feedback your thought process around that thank you so much sure. thank you so much mr pradeep thank you so much i think uh, you you spoke about fast changing landscape of threat management and all that um, in in your uh, you know context setting um, and i am sure that you know uh, we are going to have an in depth discussion on all these topics that you brought up uh, during your initial uh, you know introductory part uh, at this point of time i will actually like to go back uh, you know uh, take a step back and i would like to ask my first question to each and every panelist here uh right so i'll 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 come to you one by one i'll just take your name and uh, come to you uh, but my first question is is actually divided into two parts right uh, so maybe miss shilpa we can uh, you know start with you uh, but i will be coming to each one of you with the same question uh, but my question uh, miss shilpa is that too many tools too many alerts but 60% of the enterprises cite lack of visibility what are your views on this growing complexity and fragmented security and it infrastructure so this is the first part of the question and the second part is do you believe that enterprises can benefit from a more unified view of security that connects tools workflows insights and people um, over to you mr shilpa 
Right. I think when it comes to visibility, we all know that uh, the kind of visibility that we get is is actually too much from each and every tool. And a uh, normal SIEM uh, kind of a tool cannot provide us the complete visibility. It has the data, but any analytics over that uh, only can help us. Otherwise, SIEM per se will not give us that kind of a visibility for sure in this kind of uh, complex environment with the kind of attacks that we are seeing uh, an SIEM is of course uh, we all I'm sure everybody would agree that uh, is not just one tool that we can rely on so uh, definitely we need some advanced tools advanced analytics and uh, AI ML a lot of people are talking about it I don't know how much of AI can we put into that but ML use cases I've seen yes you know it uh, helps us but again when in, with use of ML we see a lot of false positives so it needs a lot of training and all that so you know it is it's a never-ending uh, I think discussion for any CISO or uh, any security lead for that matter that uh, how do we address this concern so um, this is the first part. The second part that I wanted to highlight is what kind of uh, tools that we should look at. So always it is like it's a one vendor or it's a multi vendor environment. Let's say for an endpoint, you know, there have been discussions where should you go for one uh, vendor for both EPP and EDR or you should have different vendors so that you get a different telemetry, you know, and one can complement the other and uh, in fact if we go for one then what is the extended visibility that we can get or what is the additional advantage that we get if we go for uh, one particular vendor with epp or edr so that is uh, something that debate is already always there and uh, i agree for uh, one point that epp and edr should be by one vendor so that the entire endpoint posture at least uh, in terms of um, Visibility, at least one product can provide that. Maybe we can have network tools or we can have uh, something additional at the data center layer to complement these tools. So, so this, this was my view. And uh, uh, coming to this kind of complexity and with remote working, I feel EDR kind of a tool is very, very important. I mean, one of the challenges that we had faced, let's say we were working uh, remotely and we want to to triage a, uh, an endpoint or want to investigate on one endpoint and that endpoint is not connected to the network it becomes very difficult so definitely tools and technologies are important and consolidation again it depends on uh, uh, environment to environment um, solution to solution you know one solution one oem might be able to provide what we are looking at at point at uh, times it's not really feasible so that uh, discussion i think it differs with environment and with uh, every organization maybe smbs can think of going straight forward with one solution and they get the entire visibility but for a complex and uh, very large organizations the i mean there should be a lot of thought that should go into to decide that what additional tools do we require or how do we consolidate all these tools to get a better uh, visibility and better roi also it's not just about visibility and uh, of course this brings a lot of um, um, operational challenges for people who are managing these tools let's say if I, we have multiple tools and each tool will need different skills so with considering the skill scarcity the skill gap that we have that again becomes a challenge sure sure no i think uh, very well put uh you know in terms of complexity in terms of skill set and all those issues thank you so much Ms. Shilpa. uh may i come to you mr nagamon uh, for your uh, uh Take. Mr. Nagamon, are you able to help hear us? Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah, we, we can yeah. hear you now. We can hear you now. Sorry, and I said so many things. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I, 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 I fully agree with what Madam said. The endpoint detection and response has become most important nowadays, and I also believe that XDR is a, a fantastic uh, actually expansion of that uh, protection level compared with EDR. And we have EDR already implemented in our uh, organization. Okay, and uh, yes, uh, yes, you cannot completely rely on SIEM also completely. 
that is true but we have uh, many solutions like soar many people maybe i think a few go institutions have installed this uh, uh, security architecture orchestration and automated response soar this uh, i think this xdr has got something to do with soar also as far as integration is concerned i believe i am actually looking forward to some uh, input from ibm also to understand the xdr better when i have gone actually when i have googled it about xdr i am i am telling you very frankly so i have seen many things like ndr network detection and response mdr managed detection and response and uh, so many such things have come and uh, see and uh, actually the x uh, what is called mxdr <laughs> managed xdr so that part also actually we have seen that i don't know the in what way your inputs will help me i am looking forward to that as far as xdr is concerned okay thank you so much thank you so much mr vishant um, let me have your quick take on this yeah sure so so in my opinion uh, i believe everybody agree that uh, all our security operation tools they are working in silos right that's the number one problem so it's it's more of a modular approach and uh, that too from a different companies right so there is a lot of uh, still a lot of uh, Uh, issues in terms of interoperability between these tools and get the right uh, set of data and insights into what is happening and on top of it uh, uh, the the endpoints and the antivirus they are totally working you know in a very different silos so we we do uh, we put a lot of effort in uh, gathering uh, you know the details from the antivirus uh, right but but there is very less done on the behavior approach when it comes to you know behavior analysis when it comes to endpoint and and that's the reason what why i feel that uh, you know uh, getting into xdr bringing all the uh, security operation tools in a very and despite uh, with, despite you know uh, with with the different uh, technology vendors bringing them all together and then analyzing uh, makes a lot of sense right so i think uh, i think xdr is the right direction when it comes to unifying the overall data and insights okay thank you so much thank you so much uh mr prasad thanks adilya uh, i think uh, you know my my peer sees was already explained it in a very well uh, fashion right uh, one thing adilya uh, is uh, my security operation team like sock team who does 24 hours and monitoring is now complaining that the video wall with six video is not enough now we need more videos to be added because the amount of tools that we are bringing in right to protect our infrastructure to look at and you do monitor is is increasing every uh, quarter right every quarter we, we introduce something new that okay and we ask our sort team that now you start you should start monitoring this as well so um, and for any human being right is not going to be possible the number of tools that we are adding the amount of intelligence we are getting out of it it's huge right and uh, as you rightly said a lot of data is coming but uh, getting meaningful insight out of it is is still difficult right in spite of having a uh, very sophisticated uh, siem solutions or soar solutions now um, you know soar is well is still a next step you know after detection for uh, you know uh, actions but the current siem is not enough uh, to tell us exactly the actionables right and that's where we need some improvement whether that some improvement is xdr or some other solution i cannot comment on that but yeah i think xdr is moving into that direction wherein we'll get meaningful insight in a single pane of glass wherein i mm-hmm. my soft team is can focus only on one tool right or one technology wherein they can get everything so that's true mm-hmm. thank you so much thank you so much uh, mr rushikan yeah hello everyone once again yep so i guess most of the my fellow colleagues have already spoken about most of the stuff like to put it in little different perspective mm-hmm. few of them have already mentioned about the edr ndr acim so on and so forth i believe that uh, all these tools work or integrated to do only three building blocks first and foremost is your identification threat identification investigation response and remedy so either of these 
three building blocks is a combination of two three or maybe single that is the stuff my all the tools are doing across the application database or network so and that is going to remain the same there is nothing new we want to do in security gamut that apart from this any fourth or fifth thing i'm going to do along with security no this is going to remain as is identification i can investigate and i can respond so now there is something called xdr just xdr is there so whether i seriously need or just if it is available i have to just use it as of now i guess i'll put my problem statement that if this is my current problem statement or this is what i'm expecting if that is serving with the help of xdr or with the help of uh, achieving these tools inter achieving interoperability with this tool or maybe something else that should serve my purpose just yeah integrating or maybe this or that i not sure my problem statement should be solved so as of now what i feel the first and foremost my problem statement is like reducing the mean time reducing the mean time for all the three if something goes wrong my there should be minimum mean time for identification investigation and remedial action so that has to be achieved if that can be achieved by single tool if that can be achieved by interoperability or if that can be achieved by xdr that is hmm. my requirement right. and the other thing oh. okay. i need to stop my sophisticated attacks and adapt the defense to prevent the future threat if these two things can be collaborated with minimum cost and the point which uh, sometimes uh, security person miss out is without compromising the performance if i have high end security appliances security devices but if my business is going for a toss my performance is going for a toss then i think i have not done a right this is an as a ciso because as of now we have to bring the business factor also into the play so of course with the minimum cost or oh, someone has rightly mentioned with as accurate roi and without making much trade off of performance because if i add something else or if i just collaborate to achieve the interoperability but if my performance is going for a toss i guess i don't thing i have done a wise decision so that's it uh, xdr a uh, good concept uh, it has a uh, sophisticated features uh, it is still evolving however if it is solving my problem statement then that is good if it just a uh, uh, security gamut or just a buzzword then i'm sorry but uh, i don't think it may be helpful no very well in very well in and before i go to uh, you know mr pradeep to kind of uh, you know check on the points that you have mentioned specifically uh, mr rishkan uh, let me just quick uh, take a quick uh, input from mr manish also uh, you know very quickly mr manish you you heard them all but if, if there is a slight difference in your perspective or uh, help us understand that very quickly and uh, sure so my old security expert friends has almost uh, told all the stories so i would like to summarize all in a in a few sentence is uh, right now we have all the technologies all the tools but we need something kind of a dashboard kind of a thing which act with the ai artificial intelligence there should mm -hmm. be automations you know mm -hmm. uh, where uh, my soc person is missing something it should be response react uh, without uh, manual interventions and then react and then deviations so i think sure. that's the thing uh, is a, is the future that we are missing now so sure. i would no, say fair point uh, that's the thing yeah. absolutely fair point and let me come to um, you know mr pradeep very quickly uh, and 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 take his uh, you know inputs on this mr pradeep sure. yeah so sure. thanks uh, in fact very very interesting uh, inputs uh, very open discussion so thanks for all the feedbacks so this is in fact in line with a lot of you know discussion that we have with our you know industry experts our customers our c sort etc so two aspect to it you know uh, in the same line of what mr rishikant sir has mentioned any soc operations right when it comes to the threat management part of it you know three or four i mean 
Sarah has actually consolidated two of that area. So basically, we look at it like you get visibility, help you doing the detection and investigation, and the response, incident response. And so that. Now, the biggest challenge, right, when you are talking about multiple tools, like you no, know, everybody has mentioned, you know, that you no, know, you have so many tools in the you know in the organization and you cannot get away with that. Right. It, you have to live with them. There's all design, purpose design for specific uh, reasons. Now, how do you get a visibility, integrated visibility of all of them into a single pane of glass? So when I say visibility, visibility are three areas. This is what um, if you see Gartner has defined about the SOC visibility triad. So visibility triad of Gartner model says that your visibility into your endpoints, which is endpoint detection and response, visibility into your network, which is you now network detection and response, and the SIEM platform. So these three are to work in tandem to give the complete visibility because there are three areas where you, know, you can get information from. So that completes the visibility part of it. Second is the detection and response. Now, the philosophy that IBM follows is that XDR is not a new tool or you know, something that no one tool that can replace all of them. IBM's philosophy is that XDR is a tool that integrates all your existing solutions, right? When it comes to EDR, NDR, SIM tool, SOAR platform, gives you an end-to-end -end visibility right as a single pane of glass thereby reducing the number of alerts right reducing the number of alerts which means you're reducing the the fatigue of the SOC analyst by you know going through you know thousands of you know hundreds of thousands of alerts every day so reduce the number of alerts get a single pane of visibility and it integrates all these tools and allows you to deepen your visibility do deep investigation and take you know do uh, remedial responses right so we look at xdr as one integrated you know solution for all this existing tools existing tools coming from different oems different vendors right uh, without ripping and replacing your current investment organizations should be able to get the single integrated visibility of the entire SOC process so that's a concept of uh, IBM XDR or IBM's philosophy around XDR. So I think going forward, when we have discussion, we can probably touch upon some of these areas that we strongly believe should be, you know, helping the customers, you know, getting more and more visibility, reducing the amount of manual tasks that has been done, and how to improvise your, you know, how to improve your position. Yeah, that's that's uh, yeah. from IBM. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, my next question is for Mr. Millen. Uh, Mr. Millen, you must have heard all the speaker talk about, uh, you know, the visibility issues around visibility, complexity, and the whole turnaround time uh, with regards to, you know, addressing the threat management, um, uh, you know, landscape. Uh, so my question to you, Mr. Millen, is that, uh, you know, today we see that the average time it takes to detect and contain threats has increased to 320 days as per some study. Do you think that manual threat investigations are slowing things down? What do you think is the role that AI and automation can play in improving mean time to respond? Over to you, Mr. Millen. Yeah, thank you. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so nice. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's a very interesting question, no doubt about it. And automation and AI will definitely play a very important role to reduce the time required for detecting and eradicating the uh, threats which are existing. I'm not even talking about the potential threats uh, in any network, be it small or big. But what I feel is, apart from the manual intervention, which is taking a lot of time, I don't think any human is taking time of 320 days to detect. Ultimately, it is not the human inefficiency or limitations which is causing this kind of a delay. My strong belief is that it is primarily because of 
the confusion in aligning and orienting your log sources and analyzing the events which a no human does nowadays uh, you cannot think of any organization having a battery of people sitting and looking at the logs to identify where the events are and the second thing is a large focus on detection uh, we are in an era where we have to move from detection to prevention from reactive to proactive and that is something which is missing and that is probably possible with uh, uh, inclusion of ai and uh, machine learning and automation in this particular process so 320 days delay in detecting a particular uh, threat within the organization is not purely because of manual work it is more because there are no mechanisms to detect them fast there are no necessary facilities to detect them fast we have all heard about threat hunting all of us know about threat hunting how many times do we do a proactive threat hunting we always do threat hunting which is triggered something has to happen for our threat hunting to get triggered how many times we think oh my god last 15 days there is no trigger into my uh, sigm or uh, monitoring system let me go and figure out whether there are any threats dormant in my setup we don't do that what kind of audits we perform on our infrastructure we perform extensive performance audits on our in infrastructure but how many times do we perform threat audits on our infrastructure so i think this delay is because of not being able to align the practices and the second reason for it is one ability to have that kind of technology at affordable price other ability to have the skills who can actually implement the technology monitor it and put to use in the way that this whole time period can be reduced so that's what i would like to say i mean sure maybe no. i said it straightforwardly no no uh, it, it's just absolutely uh, uh, you know perfect that you know some 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 of it is really thought provoking as an organization how many times do we do that right and we generally tend to feel that if there is no noise everything is fine right so i mean that's the that's the human tendency and you're absolutely right on that okay we we also have with us mr uh, mr yask ciso iocl with us uh, so my next question to him would be the same question that i asked uh, mr melin mr yask if you are able to hear us we want to capture your views on uh, the ai and automation yes i am Thank you so much. Would like to hear your view, sir. Uh, the question: AI and ML and use of that, right? Right. So, uh, I mean, uh, overall, uh, in order to reduce the, uh, you know, the time it takes to kind of uh, address a particular threat, right? I mean, how we can put AI and automation in play to improve the mean overall mean time, right? to respond see i think i think what is important this is an absolute must now gone are the days when we used to think that ai and ml and see first of all ai and ml is not a new phenomena or a new concept this has been there almost for the past year in fact this uh, the term ai has been in existence for almost 50 odd years now see the point is that what exactly are we wanting to achieve by using this ai and ml the kind of threats you know we are you are talking about xdr the kind of threats the kind of events that are now being generated are humanly impossible to be managed or treated or looked at so the only solution is that the machines have to do it there is absolutely no doubt about that point is that are we making or tutoring our machines uh, smartly for them to address the sorry so uh, the point is that are we really uh, making our machines smart enough to understand and work on these yes we are we are in the process of doing that security orchestration and automation response is all about that i think the only way to handle the kind of threat and you know the, the alert fatigue as they call it is to let the machines handle most of the uh, threats it's all about identifying and the whole focus i think the whole you know we we used to talk about those uh, steps that we take one is the identification then prevention and detection we have been talking about 
about a lot of these things i think what is important is for us to realize that uh what is to be done is to bring down the dwell time the time you know detection you mentioned some 320 or whatever those numbers i mean i actually don't go by these numbers uh, these can be misleading to be brought down it can only be brought down by use of ai and ml but having said that it is also important to understand this ai and ml is not like a magic dust you know you just spray it and everything becomes uh, very rosy it has to be tutored it has to be the machines have to be uh made intelligent for them to start acting and therefore i think going forward the only way is to uh, uh make the machines intelligent by using the intelligence that they, uh, is to be brought into these systems sure sure very valid input very well so mr pradeep i would come to you and uh, just keep those things those either issues challenges that uh, either mr yas has spoken about in terms of training the model right so training and all those kind of things so just keep that in mind for a while i'll let me just quickly take uh, you know some more uh, you know uh, uh, inputs on that some more feedback on that so mr prasad uh, if you you would like to add something on that um, sure. your views on yeah i think uh, uh, you know you spoke about two parameters right one is detecting the threat and the second is containment right which is uh, remediation of the threat uh now the time taken by every organization for these two different processes i would say will differ right based on the kind of technologies they have for detection uh and the kind of uh, people skill set that they have for remediation okay mm -hmm. um and you know based on my experience in last three organization where you know uh, working on similar kind of portfolio uh my experience is very different right so if you have right kind of tools if you are right kind of uh, monitoring system and processes the detection would be much faster okay uh, but the way we operate internally right uh, getting support from required support from it business in terms of downtime and you know very other uh, dependencies the containment right which is re remediation uh, really take a lot of time uh, if we can have certain automation in terms of remediation now i think that will definitely improve this in uh, complete mttr uh, part of it great thank you so much thank you michel pai any quick take from your side on that uh, you're, you're on mute, mute sorry i was on yeah. mute sorry so um yeah, i just wanted to add one point although we have these uh, you know we use this ml techniques to you know correlate and understand you know what could be the real threat but i feel one thing that we need to always see is uh, instead of detection we should uh, focus on proactive detection because i think prevention is no more uh, the uh, approach that we all take it's about uh, proactive detection so one thing that is important here is the threat intent on the uh, the telemetry that we get which would correlate uh, with this kind of events and that will bring up some actionable or meaningful information to us otherwise it would be a just a normal correlation or we would have seen the moment we come to know yes this attack has happened somewhere else and somebody has just brought this intelligence to us saying yes this could be a probable attack attempt is what is will be the value add to any organization sure thank you so much thank you so much mr vishant uh... yeah so uh, basically i think uh, it's it's uh, so so the time to detect uh, one one reason is also is that you know the sock is already overwhelmed with so much of internal priorities right that that itself is uh, one more reason and to be honest if the uh, event is not detected for uh, or not worked on 320 days i think the harm is already done then uh, if you look at the uh, effect is because those events were not detected that's the reason if there are any exploits or any kind of uh, remediation is required so these teams are already working on those remediation right so they are already doing those investigations and this is because those events were not detected in past so one thing uh, that uh, that you know the xdr like i said it's more about you know going behavior based uh, rather than having signature based approach and uh, and more into you know detecting all this uh, kind of uh, threats from endpoints or from network or from your you know privilege access management uh, tools or your dlps 
like i said it's all about uh, you know bringing all this together so so one thing that we started uh, is doing is basically when we find a vulnerability right we basically take that data and ingest it to our system right and what we do is that we we now uh, start uh, we we start to giving uh, those particular assets more priority to work on right because we, uh, everyone know that you know if i run a vulnerability scan i will get tons of vulnerability right because not every system can be patched on time not every system can be hardened on time so obviously there are always open vulnerabilities and they only keep on growing so if i if i scan if i give a team to scan those vulnerabilities it doesn't mean that those vulnerabilities are going to reduce in the next quarter because new vulnerabilities come new devices come so it keeps on growing actually at exponential rate so uh, that, that that is how uh, you know all this uh, 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 you know tools security tools can be used uh, not in silos but basically when we start unifying and start speaking a lot of sin and i think sdr is actually doing that in that right direction okay thank you so much thank you so much so maybe uh, let me come to you mr pradeep uh, you know and, and you you heard uh, you know uh, Mr. Bellin speak about uh, you know that it doesn't take 320 days just because you know it it took that much of time but many a times we are not able to establish the patterns and everything and you heard Mr. Yask also talk about training the model uh, if you have to be effectively using your models and be proactive in uh, you know uh, this so over to you yeah so in fact uh, three very important uh, aspect uh, like uh yar sir has mentioned you know, you know having an ml platform or an ai platform is not going to solve the problem right now you need to train the platform to detect it, uh, okay at the right time second as uh, shilpa mao has mentioned about you know having the threat intelligence right the right intelligence made you know being made available to the the soc platform at the right time so that you are aware that no there is a vulnerability you know the the ios information are available at the, you know rightly mentioned is there is some vulnerability that has been detected at some part of the universe some part of the world is it going to be relevant to you right you now what preventive measure i'm supposed to take on this that is a second part and as prasad has rightly mentioned right um the ttr the main time to respond or maintain to detect and respond is of utmost importance now like um, no while 320 days could be a you know one of the events you now that has been uh, published by you know the monument study that no that's an on an average that has been found across so many number of protections uh, they have done but it could be more or less there right i mean you have it, it the vulnerability is there or the, the threats are there not been detected at the right time it you know it happens everywhere it's humanly impossible to have all of them analyzed you know on a real time basis right and uh, last what you know mr bishanth has rightly mentioned about the vulnerability right you know yes there are you no know, hundreds of vulnerabilities that you detect any time you run a vulnerability scan there is a vulnerability right are uh, um, can i run behind passing all of them no so it's all about identifying the right you know vulnerability which i need to prioritize on okay so we look at or from ibm security the way we look at it you no know, on three aspects one um, the the first thing is to get the complete visibility of the security landscape right or the threat landscape i would say one about no uh, like shilpa mam has rightly mentioned getting the right intelligence at the right time right so if you if you see the expos which is actually a threat uh, intelligence platform of ibm which is the largest threat in, you know research platform uh, of ibm we see at least no 50 new malware coming up every day that's something like no sporadic like no mushroom like it comes up and you no know, disappear you know some of them are you no know, dies of its own some have been generated by bots you know students are generating malware you no know, it's it's a fun right you no know, it's like you no know, creating games like android applications it keeps coming up every day but what is that that one vulnerability or malware that i am likely to get hit okay or i should be careful about so what we do is there is a large team of researchers who do the day to day you know regular 
you know monitoring of this uh, you know new malware new vulnerabilities that is getting detected okay doing a reverse engineering of some of this you know critical malware to find out what is the signature you know what is a pattern may or may not have a signature what is a pattern and what is it targeted is it targeted for a financial service or industry or is it targeted for manufacturing or it could be targeting only for some of the nuclear plants what is the behavior of that get that information process it and make it available to the soc platform so that they can take a timely remedial action maybe it could be you know, the signature that you, know, you feed into your sim platform to detect it the moment it comes or send it to your firewall so that you now it can block it there so this is one activity that the research team does in the back end okay they continuously publish this malware and send to those set of customers which are applicable right so um some of this malware are very targeted ones if you see you know, it's specifically targeting mobile banking customers right it cannot work anywhere else right it's specifically looking for mobile banking information or internet banking information or retail related you no know, online swiping of your card payment gateways so getting that information processing it making it available so that that intelligence is up to date for the end customer so this is one part of it second is automation platform why is it important on two aspect the orchestration platform gives a specific set of processes to follow and something goes right what happens is most of the time when you, when you see you know there are there are no 5 to 50 people who will be part of a soc operations depends on the size of the operation center you cannot expect everybody to know what process to follow right people with one year experience are because that's a level of demand in the industry right you know people are not available so you pick whoever has a available skill set to use them sure the only way to address is to have a soc sa you know soar platform so that you have set of processes in place so when something goes wrong you know what what are the steps to be taken no no who to report what kind of alert has to be done second is the orchestration under you know, the automation part of it so there are certain things that can be done automatically so, you know blocking some of the you know say blocking a firewall port okay or going and checking if all my servers that are supposed to be reporting on a on a daily basis are they reporting or you know, are they down or there something is going on so these are the some of the monday you know, regular activities can be automated thereby bringing down the total time that is required third aspect which you know uh, yash has you know rightly mentioned about the making you know, leveraging on ai so just to touch upon what ibm has done on this space is ibm owns the largest watson platform which we call it as our ibm's ai platform called watson and uh, while that has been used in multiple fronts one of the areas that ibm has developed is on watson for cyber security so fundamentally what it does is that a set of uh, investigation activities are being automated with the help of uh watson ai so what it does is uh, something interesting that now we have some of the customers who are actually using it uh when when in a, in a regular soc manager's life or a soc analyst life they upon some information they get something and they do a lot of research into that you now to find out okay i got a particular ip okay or a url what is it right is it a bot or is it some some funny ip address somebody has generated doing some monitoring or is a command and control center so that needs a lot of googling searching of some of the databases you know checking with some some peer groups that's a very time taking activity that consumes a lot of time of the soc analyst the difficult part is that most of these activities are done by the l1 and l2 activity you know level of which is expected to be the lowest level of experience right and the the people with the lowest level of experience are actually trying to find out what is actually that vulnerability is or what is that 
particular IP address. So the Watson platform has actually used the AI intelligence, whatever it has been gathered and been continuously fed into that information to do this investigation automatically and continuously. So the threat investigator with the Watson that has been released by IBM is actually we are doing a lot of pilot project with our customers to see, is it going to add value to the customer, right? We have requested some of the, our larger banking customers to come forward and say, use it and see whether, is it going to change your life? Is it going to you know, fetch you the right result? So fundamentally it does the investigation to find out, okay, there is an IOC, okay? And what are the other information I can gather? Pull in all the artifacts, enrich it, and give only the actionable part to the SOC analyst. Okay, so this is something that IBM was heavily invested into to do a you know, you making use of AI to do the investigation and use the SOAR platform to do the response. So this is our uh, our view of you know making use of AI and you know analytics to the investigation and response. So How thank you? you so much, Mr. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Pudi. Thus far in the interaction, I've learned, you know, uh, uh, this that, uh, you know, this security field, right? Uh, you know, it's it's kind of changing very fast, evolving very fast, and you know, um, there are tools which are available today. They are sufficient. Some scenarios they are not sufficient. So continuously, uh, you know, evolving. Uh, but I think one key question that comes to my mind at this point of time is all about, you know, we as a leader and many of you also spoke about making sure that the, you know, the solution that you implement in your enterprise is something that gets you enough ROI, right? But I think one of the issue or the challenge that we're running to is about what happens with my existing investment, right? And, uh, you know, because if, if it is evolving and ever evolving and at a speed that we can't kind of predict in some sense, right? Well, how do we protect our investments, right? So challenges around protecting the existing investments, making sure that, you know, we are able to leverage and draw some good ROI on that. Uh, you know, what are the challenges around the, the investments that needed to be made, uh, you know, and I would like to start with Mr. Rishikan, Mr. Rishikan uh, to, to, to understand his views on the challenge. Yeah, I was very glad uh, that this point was raised. In most of the security discussions, uh, somewhere we don't uh, touch base upon this finance or business parameter. We talk about the alerts, we talk about the detection, and we talk about the remedial and so on and so forth. It's very difficult, I will tell you. It's very difficult because it's at least what I've been seeing since a decade or so, and what I've been hearing, this is happening since last you now couple of decade that every time at every frequent interval there is something new in the market and we have to adopt either through buzzword either through gamut or sometimes through compression also so something is going so there was the earlier it was started with some firewalls of the world then what we discuss about edr ndr uba then that is science of the world and last but not the least xdr so tomorrow there will be something some other dr xdr so yeah this is going to happen every time uh, what we did so far as i said sometimes uh, we have used as a absolute also when i say we I, I represent entire organ entire industry as a whole entire vertical as a whole so sometimes there are many security tools, appliances, they are just working as a router. Of course, when I say router, if I introduce something new, there will be alert, definitely, there will be thousands of alert. But whether those alert were useful anytime, no, answer comes in. So, actually, actually convincing management for the something new worthwhile, it's a difficult task. So until only something goes wrong, then you go for complete suit. Actually, it's a trade-off. 
it's it's a very big trade off wherein you know whether i need to go for something new or whether i should wait because it's just not just about investment it is about managing your business also your performance also so it's it, it's it's a, always a dilemma in the minds of the experts that if something new comes into the ecosystem your performance goes for a toss so without compromising the performance and without uh, i it's very difficult i say that without uh, compromising or without to touch basing my existing investment i can bring something new no this that is not going to happen because <laughs> suppose if i am using someone's vendor a ut appliances and if i am bringing something from vendor b he is not going to pay for vendor b so that is i i don't believe in this statement if i want to bring something new if i want to add up something new i have to shell out so using okay then the other question is like how about utilizing the existing resources for bringing something new well i'm not doing business of security i'm not if i generate uh, today i'm generating 1 lakh alert tomorrow if i start generating 2 lakhs alert whether i'm going to get some revenue no it is going to add cost only for reviewing those interpreting those alert for identifying false positive false negative thing to that is going to add me the cost so actually this statement doesn't stands hold good in the security ecosystem it may holds good in the business so it may holds good in the applications point of view where i have used the existing resources existing technology or existing process in the security of the world i always believe either your existing tool is obsolete it's of no use it's time to upgrade as of course trades are also evolving or else if you are bringing something new you have to shell out boss you have to ready to shell out there is nothing called i am using my existing resources and on top of that i am adding something no no that is not going to happen at least in the security gamut and uh, roi per se whatever you have invested make sure at least you are safe that is the only roi in the security there is no other roi parameter in security of the world this is my personal submission i completely agree with you completely agree with you uh, let me let me come to you mr nagamon uh, and and take your quick views on this and uh, you know in the interest of everyone's time let's um, keep it very very crisp uh you know as much as possible uh, mr nagamon over to you are, are you there mr nagamon mr melin can i have your uh, quick take on this please hello are you able to hear me yeah mr melin yeah yeah we are able to hear you yeah. sorry can you please repeat your point yeah sure so we were discussing about you know security uh, you know landscape is changing very fast evolving very fast and you know each and every yes, day there are new tools in the market how do you protect your investments right i mean that's a biggest one of the biggest concern uh, you know yeah so uh, primarily i will tell you what approach we take or what approach we find in security corners that one is that there has to be a security program in the organization now as you have yourself said that there is going to be a continuous evolution of security technology devices new entities are entering this market because it is a very very uh right for for time market and they are going to position their security so one is we should not adopt technology as a fashion because some other organization went in for so and so technology we should also have it it is not a showcase of security technology organization is not a showcase of security technology second is a uh, security program helps in uh, multiple ways one is it helps you in identifying what kind of security projects you will take in that particular year and then it is okay to blind yourself from all the things happening within that particular uh, in the security domain and focus on the program that you have devised and third is definitely it helps you to plan your budgets get it approved and all those things now when you budget something you have to tell about the utility value of it so ideally any security technology utility value in today's era would not be more than 4 to 5 years because by that time the entire things would have changed and you can't spend money on heavy security technologies every year 
so from that point of view uh, uh, when we plan any kind of a technology to be introduced within the security landscape of the organization we have to look ahead at least four to five years and see how this roadmap is evolving so one of the important uh, questions that any OEM should be asked is what is your roadmap for next two years three years four years if the yeah. OEM tells you that I have a roadmap of only two years I don't have anything for three or four years that means you know that you will not be able to project how this technology is going to evolve over the next four or five years and that is where you know there is a bit of risk of uh, being able to protect your investment so any good OEM good technology would have at least roadmap of three to four years and if it is there and you are fairly assured that your investment is protected so that's how you know we can look at how to protect the investment at the same time have good technology in the organization for protecting the digital assets great point great point thank you so much thank you so much uh, mr prasad very absolutely quickly. i agree with this yeah. Uh, yeah quickly i think it depends on uh, technology technology right uh, what we are referring to uh, and if I quickly take an example of again, uh, you know, QRDR family itself, right? We are using QRDR for more than seven, eight years now. And uh, let's say we started with SIM, then we upgraded it to uh, UAB, user behavior analysis. Then we, you know, uh, adopted resilient, right, to, you know, as a source platform. And now we're talking about XDR. So if you look at this journey, my investment that I made maybe 70 years before is still live, right? I mean, it is still giving me a return on it, right? Whereas I'm still able to modularly improve it uh, because of the threat landscape is changing. Okay, that's one example. If I take another example, wherein I was using very traditional way of firewalls, right, uh, who, which does not understand what is layer seven right? application, it doesn't understand protocol level detection, right. I have no choice in replacing them with next generation firewalls, right. So it it very much depends on what technology we're talking about. But the very right point that we heard is while selecting a technology it is very important to understand the background of the oem from which we are buying it and what is going to be the oem's roadmap for next at least three to five years i think that's a very very valid point sure. fantastic Ms. Shilpa, would you like to add something i i would if you allow me i would like to just uh, come in for a bit sure yeah so uh you know uh i'm not here to uh, promote any technology but it so happens coincidentally that we are also using QDR and we finalized on QDR about five, six years back. And your what your Prasad little, has your said, voice I, is little low. your voice is little low, <clears throat> I think. Are you, are you hear me now? Yes, better now. Yes. Much better now, Mr. Malin. Yeah, yeah, much better now. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I was telling that we also are coincidentally using QDR and we have. Uh, selected QDR over many other options five to six years back. I would like to just, I mean, I cannot resist temp uh, my temptation to say that whatever Prasad mentioned, we have actually experienced it. That time also we saw the roadmap of QRADAR and they have been able to mature to whatever they had mentioned at that time. Excellent, 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 excellent. Thank you so much, thank you so much. Ms. Shilpa, over to you. Yeah, another aspect I wanted to get to here is, okay, if you're using the same technology and you see a roadmap, fine. But what if you have multiple technologies within your environment and, uh, you know, you, you have to somewhere look at consolidation there. Mm -hmm. It could be one thing is interoperability where you have some kind of integration available because down the line, if you see, for example, XDR, so we don't know within next five years, is that going to replace SIM or is it, uh, or we will not need SOAR completely at that moment. We absolutely don't know. So, as, you know, the important aspect is interoper interoperability between the solutions existing within our network or environment is also one thing that we should look at. And uh, I totally agree that roadmap is one of the things. That's how we'll be able to justify our, uh, we would be able to make a business case and justify our investment. At the same time, we should be able to see how we are going to manage these tools also. Sure, sure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So let me let me come to you, Mr. Pradeep, and uh, you know, and take take your quick uh, you know inputs on uh, this issue. You must be hearing a lot. From the industry uh, leaders, sure. right? Sure. Uh, 
first of all, I'm I'm really glad that uh, two of my curator customers comes and in a panel and say that no, we we are happy that the product has been supported. Now, just to give it, no, I I never thought I will use the IBM product name in this discussion, but uh, curator has been there as a Gartner leader for the last 12 consecutive years. One reason is that ever since the platform was introduced to IBM and we started uh, you know, getting it deployed for the customers, the core focus of IBM is how to improve on the platform without ripping and replacing it. Yeah. Okay. We have customers who have been using it from 2012 and you know, they're still using it. All what they have done is that same platform runs and they enable you know, more and more features on top of that. We release one version every quarter and we recommend you pre-upgrade every, every six months so that you know, you'll be able to make use of the, you know, the latest functions available. So from a basic SIEM, we expanded it to network analytics, UBA, you know, and uh, we added a lot of additional capabilities, moved on to the hybrid multi-cloud platform. And now the latest in 2021, we have converted or the migrated the whole platform into Curator XDR. So the, the core functionality still remains the SIEM. It's all about add-on modular thing that you can make use of as per the customer requirement, right? There are customers st still use the 12 year old platform without adding anything. So it runs like that. So having said that, so definitely the roadmap of five years, you know, what are you going to do? And what is at least the next 12 months of visibility? Do you know what you immediately want to do? Because one challenge that every security OEM will face, we don't know what is lying you know, after two years, right? Nobody witnessed that. There is no other technology changes, no other industry changes as fast as security, right? We people never thought about, you know, that no, they will be hit by a, a malware or a ransomware until they heard about, you know, uh, the WannaCry. Right? Right. Nobody realized that now all of a sudden my users will be logging in from their homes and I will not be able to identify they're out of my perimeter. So that's the reason most of the OEMs will not be able to give a visibility beyond two years. Okay. I mean, as a practice, we give eight quarter visibility to our customers that know this is our roadmap for the next eight quarter. It could be security data lake, introducing AI into the platform. ML into the platform, custom you know, ML scripting capabilities, all those things. We still don't know after two years what is going to happen, right? Um, I mean, when when we we never expected our one of the, some of the largest banking customers will move the entire application to cloud, right? So we so the moment we see that this movement happens somewhere, then we are also prepared to make sure that the customers will be able to make use of that. And that is first actor. As, you know, I just wanted to you know, thank you know, uh, both uh, Prasad as well as um, you know, Milan sir for the, you know, highlighting. So one very important aspect which Shilpa Ma'am has mentioned about interoperability, right? So IBM has introduced this concept and we were the proponent of the idea called Open Cybersecurity Alliance. So the concept is that there are a lot of OEMs. You know, some of them are actually competition, right? We work, you know, compete with a lot of other OEMs in the market. But on the other side, the bad actors are always united, right? They share code, they share vulnerability information, they share everything where we don't share, right? So, concept of OCA, Open Cyber Open Cybersecurity Alliance, is to make sure that my platform will work in tandem with other OEMs in the system. Okay, so now there are a lot of OEMs into that you know, uh, alliance where we have Cisco, where are so many other CrowdStrike, so many platforms are sharing the intelligence with, with other platforms so that you create a unified front to defend the bad, bad actors. So OCA is a concept, is an alliance that has been formed and IBM's ideology of XDR no rip and replace. So the, the concept is that going and telling a customer that no, you're the pl platform that you have invested two years back, back is obsolete. 
please rip and replace is a crime so the idea is here to make sure that whatever investment that has been done okay you, organization make it it's not a personal choice organization make decisions after a lot of discussion a lot of evaluation and they will consider all possible scenarios at that moment to take a decision right it may change it may change after you know 18 months things may change but how do we leverage on current investment without ripping and replacing so having a single platform especially when it, when we introduce the curator xdr platform the primary concept is without ripping and replacing any of the underlying technologies how do you integrate all of them and create a single unified platform that's a concept and as mom has rightly mentioned open cyber security alliance is the underlying concept and the technology okay we use uh, you know the the uh, it was a patented technology called stick, uh, uh, stick shifter which we made it as open source so that anybody who wants to use that platform to create the interoperability can use that platform right so that's a concept um, and that's our view on this thank you so much uh, mr pradeep thank you so much i mean i had this wonderful uh, time uh, last almost one one hour 15 minutes that we have been together uh, a great learning opportunity for me and i'm sure that uh, you know each one of you could also uh, got some takeaways with you from today's discussion. Um, you know, I when we started this discussion and the whole dynamism in which this industry operates, right? And I was little, uh, you know, um, uh, taken aback in terms of, uh, you know, uh, how to cope up, right? I mean, how do we get that confidence? You know, and I was putting myself in the shoes of each one of the speaker that I was speaking to today and in the in their leadership position, right? It's a very, very, very difficult situation to be in there, right? And, uh, you know, good, uh, you know, to hear from you, Mr. Pradeep, that, uh, you know, a principal like yourself are kind of, you know, available there to extend the support. And what better than this, that there are two customers on this call today, on, on this, in this session today, talking about uh, making some investments back in 2012 and yet reaping the, uh, the, the, the results or the benefits of that investment that they would have made long, long, long back uh you know uh, and 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 continue to get kind of support that uh, you know your organization is kind of extending them and and to various other players in the industry uh great <laughs> to know that um, uh, a very quick take from your side mr pradeep uh, to kind of conclude this session today i have nothing else but a huge thanks for each one of you for your active participation but uh, let me hear from you mr pradeep sure i mean i have nothing but to say other than a big thanks for all the panelists very insightful i mean all of you are veterans in your area and you come and share you know openly share your views uh, right now which may or may not be in line with the philosophies of ipm but the the idea of this platform is to you know learn from each other and share the idea you know uh, different viewpoints so um Thank you so much on behalf of IBM for spending time with us. I know it was great, great discussion, uh, very insightful discussion, right? I mean, some of them are in sync with what we hear in the industry. Some of them are very different from what we hear from other customers, but it was great input. Thank you so much for uh, you know, teaming up and coming on a panel like this. Thank you so much. Uh, with that, I think uh, we are at wrap. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for your very, very active participation, sharing your practitioners' views today, and uh, you know, helping us learn a lot from each one of your experience. A lot to take back. Thank you so much once again. Have a great day. Stay safe. Thank you, thank you yeah. so much. Thank you, Deepak. Thank, thank, thank you for nicely manage the show. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, sure. everyone. Thank you so much. Nice meeting you, all the cyber experts. Thanks, Daya. Take care. Thank, Thank you so much. Connecting with you all. Bye bye. Thank you.